Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSP. This is a US elections, I guess, uh, US politics breaking news video concerning uh, the appointments that Donald Trump, uh, President-elect, and his team have started putting in place. Yesterday, I was trying to be as positive as I could be, and I was looking at Mike Waltz, the appointment to... A national security advisor and thinking okay he's not too bad could be worse could have been worse until I found out some further appointments that I think are absolutely insane and understood the context in which he was appointed and the through line appears to be Fox News sadly enough that appear it appears to be that if you appeared on Fox News you got a good shout at being appointed. So it turns out that Mike Walls has the uh, mantle of being the lawmaker, I believe, GOP lawmaker that's appeared most on Fox News. So if you're wondering why he was appointed as a national security advisor, that appears to be something to do with it, maybe. Maybe. I, I think he is at least somewhat qualified to be in that position, however... Uh, so that is not altogether a bad appointment, but he has changed his tune on Ukraine and he has started to tow the party line, the kind of MAGA party line on national security issues. Um, originally, he was saying we must support Zelensky in an effort to win and drive Russia completely out of Ukraine. OK, so that was good, but he's now somewhat more muted on that. And it's interesting that here's one of his appearances on Fox News. And have a, have a look at this chap on the left. Who is that guy? Well, that guy is now the Secretary of Defense. And I am blown away as to how that could possibly happen. If you weren't worried about the Trump administration yesterday for whatever reason, you should, I think, be a little more worried today. Why is that? Well, Donald Trump has picked, picked Fox News channel host and he is an Army National Guard uh, veteran, Pete Hegseth, as a Secretary of Defence. Now, this guy we knew of from what he had done previously with Trump, which is challenge some war criminal um, evaluations of some American war criminals. And he actually got two people let off, I, I do believe. Um, and he's also been dead against DEI initiatives in employment within the uh, defence sector. But essentially, he is utterly, utterly unqualified for the position he's been selected to. So Colby Babois says, willing to bet that Senator Cassidy is not alone in this. So what did Senator Cassidy say? Senator Cassidy, Bill Cassidy, uh, says he has no idea who Hegseth is. So he won't comment. So when asked about that, uh, when Senator Tillis said, when asked about Hegseth, said, interesting. Senator Ernst, rumoured to be under consideration for the job, said Hegseth is a very strong choice. So a bit of mixed messages from other Republicans here, but essentially a few of them like don't know who he is. Hegseth is, um, this is from Colby Badwa. Hegseth is a pick that is coming totally out of left field. While he's a combat veteran and a major in the National Guard, he doesn't have any executive experience either in government or the private sector. The Department of Defense has 3 million employees and takes up approximately half of the US federal government's discretionary budget. So needless to say, a high degree of managerial competence is needed to succeed in this position. Like, this is one of the single most important positions in the world. In the world. Like, there's more budget that this guy has to handle than most countries. This is, is a position that needs to be um, run by someone with immense competence in military affairs and organisational affairs, budgetary affairs. So Julia Davis says Trump makes Fox News star his Pentagon chief. Donald Trump. I mean, this is this is Lloyd Austin going to what? Well, obviously, they're going to pull out of Ukraine defense, uh, the contact group, right? 
So the Ramstein meetings where the US would be leading things. But even if they were still in that, you think this Fox News guy would, could, could run? Uh, it just it blows my mind. Donald Trump announced several additions to his forth, forthcoming administration on Tuesday, including the shocking selection of Fox News host Pete Hegseth as his Secretary of Defence. And as the Daily Beast reports, Fox News hosts conservatives feel Putin's invasion pales into comparison to wokeness in America. And those are quotes. Um, what's This is a quote. What's happening in Ukraine? And this is Pete Hegseth. This is the new Secretary of Defence incoming. What's happening in Ukraine is important, but it pales in comparison to the crime I see in my streets, to the wokeness I see in my culture. Transgender to toilets are more important than a, a war that's had over a million casualties. Okay. I don't know what to do with this. Like, I despair. And if you are like, ah, you know, one of these people that's really smug and, and lording over Trump succeeding and that I predicted it wrong and that I didn't want Trump to be in charge of the US. And you look at appointments like this. Now, of course, you'll justify it by saying it's amazing somehow. You'll do some kind of mental contortion to show that for some reason this is the right guy to have in charge because maybe you're so obsessed with woke that you think that's more important than national security, the international global security. But somehow transgender toilets are uh, the single biggest issue that consumes you on a daily basis. Now, if that's the case, I can't help you. But for someone else who can't give two monkeys about that, but does care about global security and the death of hundreds of thousands of people in Europe as a result, of an invasion in Europe, I give a shit about who is employed as a Secretary of Defence for the US. Paul Rikoff says here, I first met Hegseth when he started running Vets for Freedom around 2007. He's a highly effective and ferocious media, culture and political warrior for MAGA. Okay, so this is, you get a sense of what he's good at and beyond loyal to and trusted by Trump. I figured Trump would pick would probably pick him for chief of staff or press secretary. But this? Hegseth is undoubtedly the least qualified nominee for Secretary of Defence in American history and the most overtly political. Brace yourselves, America. Now, Sam Stein and Tim Miller on the bulwark, so these are conservatives who are anti-Trump conservatives. Tim Miller used to be a spokesman for the GOP, for goodness sake, right? They they do a lot of laughing in this, and it's nervous, kind of like... In fact, they talk about it later, say, why am I laughing? It's like, what else can I do? They feel powerless. There's a sense of panic and, and powerlessness. But this is their evaluation of Hegseth. Yeah, you know, I was like... <laughs> Pete Hegseth for the Secretary no. of Defense? I mean, it's yeah. not like it's not like one of the dumb departments. You know, it's not no, like this they is put a, a fog. <laughs> this is a, it's like a eight hundred what billion dollar department. Yeah, more. It's like, I mean, more. it's like one of probably the ten most important jobs in the entire world: the United yeah. States Secretary of Defense. And he gave it to a um, a morning chat host, uh, which I guess yeah. gives me some hope for the future. Uh, but Pete Hegseth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no relevant skills, no experience, no. Ability. He served. He, he served. served. That's okay. it. Okay, sure. The, that's like saying I, I've eaten ice cream. I should run the Baskin <laughs> Robbins <laughs> Empire. Like I yes. appreciate his service, <laughs> but I, I, but you know, to run this the Department of Defense, you know, there's yeah. there, you know, there's some leadership experience, you know, no. managing a department, <laughs> having a budget. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I, just I, I, I guess, you know, there are all sorts of analogies you can make like, well, it's having, uh, a, a ward sister, um, n a nurse, you know, running the whole NHS. It's like, okay, well, you moved up the chain within, within this area of this hospital. Now you're going to run the entirety of the NHS. Uh, do I have the skills? No, no, you don't have the skills. But I saw you on Fox News and you were pretty good. 
just chatting with Steve Ducey and a rotating cast of blondes is not really like the ki- type of subject matter experience that normally people brought to the position right. of Secretary of Defense of the United States of America. I just want to, I want to pull up, yeah, I want to pull up these data points here. Department of Defense employs over 2.1 million military service members and more than 770,000 civilian employees, making it the largest employer in the United States. So that Fox News host now is in, is in charge of, well, he's basically the largest employer in the United States. Wow. That, yeah, I mean, is that, running that. Um, yeah, it could possible. Yeah. I don't think he has the right experience. But you he don't was think so? no, and he and he, but he is on Fox News, and that sort of like does it for Trump. I mean, if you look at these appointments, the one through line is these people go on Fox News. Do right? you think, like that's, okay, two thoughts on this. Number right. one, we are in idiot. I mean, we are already idiocracy? in idiocracy, but this is idiocracy. <laughs> this is a total ca- like we're in a total <laughs> cacistocracy. This is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. This country is fucked. It's pretty bad. It's Number pretty two, bad, justice for Newsmax. Okay, if we're going here. <laughs> so this is why they're saying, well, poor old Newsmax and OANN, what do they have to do to get recognition? Uh, it, it's it's really interesting. And, and you know, they talk about how actually Mike Walls is, is, has appeared on, um, on Fox the most. And that really does appear to be, we know Trump loves Fox. He's lit, watches Fox all the time. He phones into Fox all the time. He knows all of those presenters very very well and that appears to be enough to um skew his evaluation of them as prospective candidates for insanely important jobs this is just a little bit later here talking about the actual uh, statement uh this is tim miller again some good shit right here <laughs> how is this life right now um all right our new secretary of defense here it is here um pete has been a host at Fox News for eight years. That's pretty, so that's pretty good. Consistent, Not bad, consistent I guess. employment. We use that platform to fight for our military and veterans. Pete's recent book, The War on Warriors. The War on Warriors. That's interesting. That's War on Warriors is kind of a tongue twister. Spent nine weeks on the New York Times bestseller list, including two weeks at number one. Whoa. All caps. Right there. All caps. <laughs> number one. Two if weeks at number one. If that doesn't... Uh, uh, and although they're, they're taking a mickey here, actually, we need to look at that, which is, this is why I think he's good for his job. You know, if you're putting on a, on a statement to the world, why you have employed Pete Hegseth for the position of Secretary of State, and you're saying he got a number one time, a number one New York Times bestseller for X amount of weeks... That is your justification for employment. You think that is sufficiently, or at least it is, is goes a large way to justify why you are employing him as Secretary of Defense. Um, Doesn't get you confirmed by the Senate. I just don't know. I what mean, does these a days. lot of people have done number one bestsellers. I only hit number two myself, uh, but uh, you know, <laughs> Brian. So, so, so on and so forth. And you like I. They're laughing, but I am deeply, deeply concerned about that. I mean, they are deeply concerned, and they're, and they're going to talk about this. It's just, uh, you know, how do you... And they talk about the... And Tim Miller's talked about this elsewhere. This idea that Democrats have been completely stripped of power, right? So they don't have uh, the president, the Senate, the uh, House of Representatives, and the Supreme Court. So Supreme, Supreme Court's conservative six, liberal three judges there. So they are completely out of power. The only thing they can hold on to is that the Republicans will have a very slim majority in the House of Representatives. But that's scant uh, comfort, I think. So they have two options. Do they fight, you know, tooth and nail against everything? But they're doing that from a platform of having no power. So how do you fight? You can... Uh, mobilize with activists but really how can you fight in the corridors of power it's very very difficult so the second option is is this position called some called accelerationism so accelerationism is that you want to just say well this is what you voted for literally you you get what you get what you want you get what you vote for this is it go for it 
and actually kind of almost accelerate the fire you know you need to understand you need to experience what you voted for here you go we're gonna we're, we're gonna let you do all this we're gonna accelerate that fire until it burns out and then you realize what's happened and then you come to this moment of like oh maybe i should have thought a little bit more about my vote okay and now we need to start again so there, there is this kind of, there are some people who are like we just need to let this happen this needs to uh be as terrible as as it as it can be in order that those independents and those undecided voters who came out and sided with Trump kind of learn the lesson of doing so. Low information voters lead to fascistic autocracies. Oh, turns out there, there was a quote. There was a quote that, oh, I, I'll find it for you. It is absolutely insane. I forget what um, newspaper this is from, but this is, this is the excerpt from, from the newspaper article. In Scranton on Wednesday, Mr. Matt Wolfson, a 45-year-old former construction worker, looked around at poverty in the Rust Belt city and thought the nation needed a change in leadership. Wolfson said he didn't love the dictatorial aspect of Trump's personality, but thought it could help keep the country out of wars and maybe bring peace in some other conflicts, including in Ukraine. Quote, he's good and bad. People say he's a dictator. I believe that. I consider him like Hitler, Wolf said, but I voted for the man. Right. Someone going, yeah, I know this guy's like Hitler and he's dictatorial. Fascistic. But I voted for him anyway. So this is where Tim Miller goes, well, you get what you voted for. In this case, you get what you, you kind of like, this is your just desserts. If you said... I recognise he's Hitlerian, but I voted for him anyway, then on your head be it. Just incredible. So then we're going to add a little bit to this. So this is Shashank Joshi from The Economist. The purges begin, quote from the Wall Street Journal. The Trump transition team is considering the draft executive order that establishes a warrior board of retired senior military personnel to review three and four star officers and to recommend removals of any deemed unfit for leadership. So this is going to be anyone who I'm sure if you're black and a three or four star um, general, you're going to be like, well, that's a DEI hire. So he's out or she's out because she's a woman. This kind of, which is Pete Hegseth. So Pete Hegseth is a guy that's been railing against DEI initiatives in the armed forces. Is going to be overseeing a purge of the armed forces. It would appear of military personnel who are not deemed fit for position, and that's going to be a loyalty test to Trump. This is like autocracy 101. Honestly, if you're a Trump fan, tell me in the the thread below genuinely why you think this is this is great. Why, if you genuinely think this is taking the country in a good direction. Add to that, Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy, and we know how much I like Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk, will lead the new Department of Energy of Government Efficiency, Doge. Of course, they're going to call it Doge for short, according to Trump. The department will dismantle government bureaucracy, slash excess regulations, cut wasteful expenditures and restructure federal agencies so these two unelected uh people are going to have this much power without uh, uh, uh what this also allows i'm thinking is conflict of interest to still maintain so if elon musk is not an official part of the government then he doesn't need to divest himself of his of twitter of its, this and that tesla blah 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 no conflict of interest he's contracted he's he's monetarily financially contracted to the government he's a government contractor right there are huge starlink tesla and other contracts with musk's entities with the government and yet he's in charge of restructuring federal agencies imagine imagine if this was uh, a similar thing taking place on the Democratic side and how the GOP would... If you're a Republican, you would be incandescent with rage. 
Dividing the role between Elon and Vivek seems like a power play from Trump, who probably doesn't want to give too up too much power to one of the biggest donors. There's a clear conflict of interest with Elon heading companies that have landed lucrative government contracts in the last years. While running for the Republican presidency, says Pekka Kalyanyemi, previously Soros funded Vivek, promised to eliminate the FBI, the Department of Education, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. He's been previously accused of questionable stock trade patterns, and some have even claimed he performed a so-called pump and dump operation with uh, their Alzheimer drug that failed to deliver. Elon has shown admiration for the Argentinian president, Javier Millet, who's cut Argentina's public spending massively. The two have met at least twice. Um, so that is happening. Then you look, start looking at how this is being delivered. So President-elect Trump taps Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to start a US Department of Government efficiency. I look for, now, let's read what Trump has said to get a sense of what's really going on in Trump's head. Just look at the wording here. So always the little things. And the capitalization. This is bizarre. Statement from President Donald J. Trump. So this is an official statement. This has been proofread before going out. I am pleased to announce that the great Elon Musk, capital G, the great, it's like Peter the Great. It's like Alfred the Great. It's like a king. It's like a title. Oh, it's just a, it's just a, a typo. Yeah, why is that not being caught? This is an official Trump statement. I am pleased to announce that the great Elon Musk, working in conjunction with American Patriot, capital P for Patriot, American Patriot Vivek Ramaswamy, will lead the Department of Government Efficiency, Doge, uh, together these two wonderful Americans, in a will pave the way for my administration to dismantle government bureaucracy slash excess regulations, cut wasteful expenditures and restructure federal agencies. Essential to the Save America movement, this will send shockwaves through the system and anyone involved in government waste, which is a lot of people, stated Mr. Mr. Musk. It will become potentially the Manhattan Project of our time. Republican politicians have dreamed about the objectives of Doge for a very long time. To drive this kind of drastic change, the Department of Government Efficiency will provide advice and guidance from outside the government and will partner with the White House and Office of Management and Budget to drive large-scale uh, structural reform and create an entrepreneurial approach to government never seen before. I look forward to Elon and Vivek making changes to the federal bureaucracy with an eye on efficiency and at the same time making life better for all Americans. Importantly, we will drive out the massive waste and fraud which exists throughout annual $6.5 trillion of government spending. They'll work together to liberate our economy. This language, although you might say, yeah, of course we want to cut waste. Of course we don't want government to be bloated and, and spending, overspending on X, Y, and Z and you know, all this X inefficiency, so on and so forth. But when you're talking about liberating the economy, do you understand that there's ideology all over this? This isn't just about a sensible approach to cutting waste. This is an ideological drive to slash and burn make the US accountable, US government accountable to we the people. Their work, by the way, if you're going back to Pete Hegseth, he's got we the people tattooed massively across his arm there. So uh, their work will conclude no, ma no later than July the 4th, 2026. A smaller government with more efficiency and less bureaucracy will be the perfect gift to America. Um, I am confident they will succeed. So, uh, yeah. On the one hand, you can agree that the drive towards greater efficiency is not a bad thing. But I think this is way more than that. There's an ideological drive here that we need to understand in terms of Project 2025. And we'll come to that in a second. A second, there's blowback from Musk's Department of Government Efficiency, says Elliot Higgins from Bellingcat. Trump will use Musk as a convenient scapegoat and fire him, leading to Musk melting down completely. Um, maybe. Uh, Elon Musk's super PAC spent around $200 million to help elect Donald Trump according to a person familiar with ground group's spending, funding an effort that set a new standard for how billionaires can influence elections. So we were we were saying, wow, it looks like the D Democrats have well outspent the Republicans, but it turns out that one person in particular, well, the Democrats got money from a lot of different places, particularly small donations. The Republicans relied massively on Elon Musk, and Elon Musk has bought himself a position in the US government and he is going to slash the US government to the benefit of his own, no doubt, this is conjecture, but no doubt to the benefit of his own 
uh, corporate entities. That, that he is essentially lining his own pocket or um, he's, he's painting himself into a position of inordinate, inordinate power. His $44 billion gamble has paid off, says War Translated. In other words, buying Twitter has paid off because that's your statement from Donald Trump, the great Elon Musk. OSINT Defender here says Elon Musk, who President-elect Donald Trump has nominated. So OSINT Defender is an OSINTer, but he's a not very good one. And Elon Musk praised him and said, you should follow OSINT Defender. So I'm, I'm saying that because something I'm going to say a little bit later. Uh, stated that all and any actions made by the department will be published online to ensure maximum accountability and transparency. Elon Musk, all actions of the Department of Government Efficiency will be posted online for maximum transparency. This all sounds good until you understand this is almost a joke, Right. This is your government, the US, Americans out there listening. This is your government and laughy, laughy emoji face, right, is how you communicate with the American people. This is the state of people just sit on your phones and laugh at these very uh, pithy statements put out by an oligarch who is essentially running your country. Anytime the public thinks we are cutting something important or not cutting something wasteful, just let us know. Just tweet us. We will also have a leaderboard for most insanely dumb spending of your tax dollars. This will be both extremely tragic and extremely entertaining. Oh, freaking hell. So running government and slashing people's jobs left, right and centre is both tragic and extremely entertaining. You terrible human being. You terrible human being. But this is like the, the kind of the state of... um. Affairs for running a government, running the most important government in the world. I think this is so disturbing. Gone are the days, as Michael Vuchar said, gone are the days of the expert. Don't need experts, you just need oligarchs to come in and laugh your emoji face, slash jobs, create um, a perfect environment to get even bigger contracts with the government than you've already got, and line your pocket and become a supreme techno fascist. Shane Harris, when the first thing you say about your CIA pick is what a great job he did going after your political opponents, this is a signal, get ready. So now we're moving on to even darker areas here. So Donald Trump's statement, another statement, I'm pleased to announce that the former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, will serve as director for the CIA. From exposing fake Russian collusion to be a Clinton campaign operation to catching the FBI's abuse of civil liberties at the FISA court, John Ratcliffe has always been a warrior for truth and honesty and the American public. When 51 intelligence officials were lying about Hunter Biden's laptop, there was one, John Ratcliffe, telling the truth to the American people. For these and many other reasons, it was my great honour to award him National Security Medal and the nation's highest order for, for distinguished achievement in the field of intelligence and national security. I look forward to blah, 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 blah. This is a guy who is going to use the FBI to clear out, or the CIA, sorry, to clear out and purge um, government or possibly anyone from who has criticised Trump previously. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Cash Patel as either the FBI or CIA director, so potentially FBI. Um, and if that happens, says this person, probably means they're weaponizing the DOJ and purging institutionalists, but also probably alienating the rank and file special agents who are working in the FBI. Now, here we have David Pepper saying the weaponization of the DOJ is laid out clearly in Project 2025. How the Attorney General, the FBI and the DOJ lawyers should all do Trump's bidding. That's not only what Trump has been saying, it's what Project 2025 makes possible. And, and just before we get on to Project 2025... Um, this is General Mike Flynn. I'm like an elephant, except I'm an Irish elephant. Not only will I never forget, I will never forgive. People must be held accountable. And you all know precisely who you are. Barack Obama, yep, starts with you. You tried to destroy my family as well as Donald Trump and his family along with our country. Unforgivable. Newsmax, we have all the receipts, just ask me. So if you're wondering what's going to be happening, there will be revenge. I hope Barack Obama takes this very seriously, as well as everyone on the psychopath's deep state target list. The total failure of DOJ, FBI, Department of Defense and POTUS to do anything about Mike Flynn will result in arrests, imprisonment and executions. So the Secret Service will not help. In other words, there's a lot of people saying 
the, the Merrick Garland, the DOJ, FBI actually were too timid in help, uh, ho- holding to account these wing nuts who have been brewing in the sidelines over the last four years. Well, the DOJ singularly failed to hold Trump account to account for his misdemeanors during and after his last tenure. And it's going to come back and bite them on the arse. Because now they're going to be cleared out. Now, I suggest, well, this is 922 pages of Project 2025. But if you for one second believed that Donald Trump wasn't going to institute this mandate for leadership, then you are incredibly gullible. He tried to distance himself from it because it was not doing well in the polls. And rightly so, because it's a freaking scary document and everything in it is being upheld, is is coming to fruition with every single appointment he has and is making. There is nothing to think he won't fully uh, embrace Project 2025. So when you're talking about the DOJ, and let's just do, uh, 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 instead of going through it, because I was going through Project 2025 earlier, it's 922 pages, and FBI and the DOJ are all over it. Uh, so let's just go to a summary. Um, I tried to get AI to summarise it, but it was too complex. Uh, so I leave it to the work of, of uh, others. Project 2025 envisions sweeping changes to economic and social policies and the federal government and its agencies, which we've already heard from Trump and the people he's appointed. Right? They've said this. DOJ, the Doge has said this. Sweeping federal reforms. Okay. So this is, this is like, it's already happening. It's already, the plans are being put in place. The plan proposes taking partisan control of the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Department of Commerce, Federal Commission, Communications Commission, FCC, and Federal Trade Commission, FTC, and Department of Homeland Security, and abolishing the Department of Education. Now, I was reading that in the, in the Project 2025, and that's exactly right. That's exactly what it says. Remember, FTC and FCC are holding uh, Elon Musk to account at the moment. Just, just, just thought I'd throw that out there. So, this is a way of removing all investigations into Elon Musk, and he's the guy in charge of of he's the fox in charge of the hen house. Uh, and you're going to get rid of the Department of Education. They've already said they're going to do that. Um, so on and so forth. We'll join it a little bit later in the section for um, for expansion of uh, presidential powers. Uh, I mean, that's it. So Project 2025 seeks to place the federal government's entire executive branch under direct presidential control. Oh, dictator, autocrat. Eliminating the independence of the DOJ, the FBI, and the Federal Communications Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, and other agencies. Law enforcement. In the view of Project 2025, the Department of Justice has become, quote, a bloated bureaucracy with a critical core of personnel who are infatuated with the perpetuation of the radical liberal agenda and has forfeited the trust of the American people due to its role in the investigation of the alleged Trump-Russia collusion. It must therefore be thoroughly reformed and closely overseen by the White House and the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation must be personally accountable to the president. You are now seeing the guardrails for a presidency not only being taken away, but being used as weapons by the presidency. The FBI will become a tool directly of the president. DOJ reformed per Project 2025's recommendations would combat affirmative discrimination or anti-white racism, citing the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Former Trump DOJ official Gene Hamilton argues that advancing the interests of certain segments of American society comes at the expense of other Americans and in nearly all cases violates long-standing federal law. Therefore, the DOJ Civil Rights Division would prosecute all state and local governments, institutions of higher education, corporations and any other private employers with DEI or affirmative action programs. 
legal settlements called consent decrees between the DOJ and local police departments would be curtailed. According to Project 2025, if the responsibilities of the FBI and other federal agencies such as the Drug Enforcement Administration overlapped, then the latter should take the lead, leaving the FBI to concentrate on other serious crimes and threats to national security. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Super, super, super concerned. Uh, so just as we move on to the final straight here, um, expect huge amounts of retribution. Uh, Alina Harbour, the legal spokeswoman and attorney for President-elect Donald Trump, is said to have been tipped as front runner for White House press secretary. Ugh. And um, Trump has long uh, demonstrated affinity for Putin while harboring deep disdain for Zelensky, stemming in part from Zelensky's refusal to be shaken down by Trump during the scandal that led to Trump's first impeachment. That's The Hill. So The Hill is pretty um, centrist, cent slightly centre-right publication that is saying, basically, he is beholden, Trump, to that moment where Zelensky refused to get dirt on Biden. And that's why I've said this many a time. And that's why he doesn't like Zelensky. And that's why he's favouring Russia over Ukraine. And it's all rather worrying. Now, um, I uh, I got pretty angry earlier because those didn't defend it. If you aren't an American and are making suggestions about what the United States and the US leaders should or should not do, please shut the hell up. No, I said. You need to shut up about everything happening internationally if that's the case. I will comment and I will criticise. It's my right and it is my duty to someone involved in global geopolitics where everything America does, based on the people in the administration, decide what they decide affects the world. And you, as a global OSINT person, are, are commenting entirely about what goes on in the rest of the world. You talk incessantly about Israel and Palestine. I don't tell you to shut up about that because you are not Israeli or Palestinian or whatever. Or, you you know, if, I presume you're an American, but it, it doesn't matter. Whoever you are, you are commenting incessantly on what's going on around the world. But as soon as someone criticizes your beloved Trumpian leader or Trump and the people he puts in place... You, you should shut up. You're not allowed to. Oh, freedom of speech suddenly goes when you are getting criticised. It's like Elon Musk 2.0. And no wonder Elon Musk likes this guy. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in at the end. As you can see, I am, I am deeply perturbed. I, I tried to be really positive yesterday. Uh, to look on the bright side of things. But every single appointment at the moment is incredibly worrying. It's incredibly worrying. The U.S. has just embarked on a on a journey towards self destruction in many ways, and I and I don't know how that trajectory can be influenced by anyone else, because you, all forms of accountability are being stripped away, all checks and all balances, the compass. The maps, they're all being thrown out. Trump on that steam liner heading straight for self-destruction has put is is putting every single one of his most loyal lackeys in as crew members. That bridge is full of Trump loyalists. And at the helm. My goodness, at, at, at the helm of the good ship DOD, you've got a Fox News commentator. I don't know. It's worrying.